The first software is going to be LibreOffice. LibreOffice makes it onto a lot of people's lists because it's good and it works very well. LibreOffice is one of my go-to pieces of software for work and personal. It has a word processor, it has a spreadsheet, it has a presentation app, and also has a um, couple of things that some other office suites don't really have, like a draw function where you can draw different things. I use it for workflows or I use it for like organizational charts, things like that. That's what I mainly use draw for. And then there's math. Like I've said before, I don't use math, but a lot of people use it for a lot of high level calculations and functions on a level that I'm just not on, but it's there if you need it. I also like to use it for work because sometimes you'll have some corruption in some documents that a office suite like Microsoft Office won't open. LibreOffice will take it. If it has a little corruption, it'll try to do it. And if it can open it nine times out of 10, it can open things that have a little bit of corruption. If it's really corrupted, it won't be able to open it. But if it's something that Microsoft Office won't open, nine times out of 10, LibreOffice can open it. I also like the fact that it's a full fledged suite. They also have a database function, which not a lot of open source office suites have. And that's a big hold back to a lot of people who need a database like access, but don't have it in the open source world are part of their office suite. And they do have that. And that's really good. And that's really impressive that an open source software would have that. LibreOffice works for Windows, Linux, and Mac. The next one is ShareX. ShareX is a Windows only app, but it's one of the best screen capture and screen recording software that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. It makes things so simple and easy. That's what makes it so powerful that it can record by window, it can record by screen, it can record by application, it can screenshot any of that stuff without having, let's say if you have some important information in the background and you wanna just screen record the window on top, you can do that and not capture anything else. And it's also one of the easiest screenshot uh, apps out there. You don't have to do like the old days where you had to go and screen print and then go to paint and then paste it and then save it. It, 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 it takes all that complication out. You just go to what you want, hit screen capture, bam, it's in a folder and it's simple as that. You don't have to go through all those steps because sometimes you go through all those steps and it's just time consuming. It cuts down a lot of that old school way of screenshots and screen capture. You can also do screen recording with this and it works very well. The only downside is if you want some audio, you have to go in and make some changes and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Okay, so you go to task settings. Then when you go there, go to screen recording under the capture right here. Then hit screen recording options. And then right here, you'll see install recorder devices. You have to install the devices, go through that process because the audio source right here will be something that's not that and it'll be completely silent. So make sure you install recorder devices, exit out, and now you can start recording on um, ShareX. You can also edit and upload and do a whole lot of other things with this ShareX. It's a very powerful open source app. And if you get a chance, you need something that can record very well and do some screenshots very easy, ShareX is for you. Oh, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Adrian Randix, and this channel is about people coming together to learn more about tech. Whether you know almost everything at the top or you don't know much, I'm here to help fill in those gaps with things you may not uh, have considered before. The next one is not open source, but it is free and it's called DaVinci Resolve. Every video on this channel has been edited in DaVinci Resolve. This video right now is being currently edited in DaVinci Resolve. So what makes DaVinci Resolve so good? One, it is professional level software. I don't know why it's free. I couldn't tell you why it's free. I guess Blackmagic is trying to get you used to their ecosystem and their company. So when you try to go buy a camera, you may think about buying one of those nice Blackmagic cameras. That's just my theory. I don't know if that's true or not, but there's no reason why this powerful software should be free. And it does everything uh, you, you want it to do. The one thing about DaVinci Resolve, it has a learning curve. It's not a super intuitive, but it's not overly difficult either. It, once you learn all the basics like uh, cuts and J cuts and all those other technical terms, which are very easy to do, um, once you get past the basics and look at a couple of YouTube videos like Casey Ferris or uh, I know Jaron Dunn uses uh, DaVinci Resolve and another professional, uh, 
uses DaVinci Resolve. It takes a very powerful uh, software and puts it in the hands of people who may not have access to something so professional, right? Uh, I know a lot of people may not use it for editing, but I know a lot of big studios use it for color grading. It has some of the best color grading. Color grading means that you make, you make the colors look better and it pops a little bit. That's really all it is. It's nothing super complicated. You just color grade it. You make the color look the way you want to look. It has one of the best audio editors with Fairlight. It does anything you can think of with audio. It cleans up your audio like there's a noise going on in the background that I can go in Fairlight, clean up that noise, and you don't hear it. I hear it. You don't hear it. It takes the power of having something professional and putting it in your hands for free. And I think it's one of the best free softwares out there. The next one is a software called Osin Audio. I know it looks like Ocean Audio, but it's Osin Audio. Whenever Audacity got bought by the Muse Group in April of 2021, they changed their policies where it looks like they're collecting data on their users uh, and they're going to help um, law enforcement. And the open source community wasn't too happy about that. To me, that doesn't seem very open source to me, but you know. So Osin Audio is a great piece of software. It works very, very very similar to Audacity. All the audio for this video coming from this microphone is being recorded in Osin Audio. From my uh, testing of it, once you plug in your microphone or whatever USB interface you have, you can just you can hit record and start working. Editing is really good on it. Uh, it has some effects. It's still a growing piece of software. There's still some really good development behind Osin Audio. So if you're looking for a Audacity alternative and your stomach kind of turned by what Muse Group did with the latest version of Audacity, um, Osin Audio is a great alternative to uh, Audacity. The last piece of software is gonna be a software called PDF Sam. And what PDF Sam does, it lets you split and merge your PDFs, which, you know, what's the big deal? Can I split PDFs using the print function on my computer? Yes, but you can't merge your PDFs. So what this does, I have a video on it. If you want to look at it, it's right there, but a little quick overview of what PDF Sam does. So what PDF Sam does is just that you can take a PDF and split it into individual pages. You can also take two different PDFs and merge them any type of way you want to merge them. You can do three pages from one document and four pages from this other document that's five, seven, eight, and 12, right? You can merge them together. You can get as granular as that as far as merging and splitting. You can split off maybe with page one, uh, eight, and 15 of a document and leave the rest. So it, it lets you do all those PDF things that you can't normally do. Now there, there is a premium version of this. Like I say in my video, you have to watch out on the install because they will try to trick you on the install to um, download the enhanced uh, version. Um, don't let them do that. For what it is, it is a very good piece of software. I'm not a fan of all the uh, the upgrade features, trying to get you to buy more. That's the only un-open sourcey thing that I don't like about it, that if it's a truly an open source piece of software, just let it stand on its own. You don't have to try to sell me slickly on the uh, back end. If your piece of software has provided enough information or enough uh, value, then I have no problem if you come out with something that I need paying for it. You just Focus on value and, and just go from there. But for what it does, it's a fantastic piece of software. That's it. Thanks for joining me. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this type of video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like this type of video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.